Hello and welcome to Romantic Readers Podcast. My name is Nicole and as always, I am joined by the lovely, the wonderful, the talented, the writer <laughs> that we have now on this podcast, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Nicole. <laughs> I'm now the non-talented like person on this podcast. We now have a professional writer and I'm just here with random thoughts and theories and Podcast You're the ideas. world traveler. You're the world traveler. You're about to be right. gallivanting across Europe and I'm just going to be at home in my same little office that is beautiful but is not a beach. So. <laughs> I'm just going to like podcast from like Barcelona and just be like, oh, I am I'm here on so the Yes. I, oh God. I just cannot wait. Guys, it's two and a half weeks away, which probably some people wouldn't have even started packing yet. Some people might be very last minute packers, but I've been looking forward to this trip for like, oh, just eight years. So I started packing like two months ago. I was just saying to Ali how, because I've had so much time, I've actually ended up doing so much shopping because I've gone, oh, well, maybe we need new t-shirts. Maybe we need new shorts. (laughs) Maybe we need new bathers. Maybe we need new shoes, everything. So it's just, I'm like, yeah, I kind of sometimes wish someone was just like, guess what? You're going tomorrow. So I would just like pack what I have rather than going and spending money. And I'm just going to overpack. Then I'm going to go there. I'm going to go shopping. It's going to be, but I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. And I cannot wait to do take you guys with me and hopefully go to some cool bookish destinations. Hopefully yeah. find a few libraries, new great little bookstores. If anyone knows of any great bookstores or anything that I should visit when I'm in like Spain, Italy, France, tell me because I cannot wait to go and explore. So yeah, that is so exciting. Um, I'm the reason that we get along so well is because I also pack like for any trip I pack at least the week before, like, because then you have a week to think about what you might've forgotten, exactly. you know? Oh, my mom, my mom nearly drove me crazy last night. Cause she was like, Oh, I'll come over like a few days before you go. And we'll look at your suitcase and we'll like change it and pull out what you don't need and things. Like that. And I was like, you are not touching my suitcase three days beforehand. I'm like, by that stage, it is a vault. It, uh, like, like this has been open. This has been in preparation for two months. It's like by the I last week. Yeah, yeah. No come in last minute and go, oh, you don't need this. You don't need, oh, let's add this. Let's add that. I'm just like, do not touch it. Don't touch it. It's yeah. finished. <laughs> yes. So, but I was. My so- husband and I went to Iceland for. 12 days so nothing anywhere close to like what you're doing but we were going to do a lot of hiking that was kind of like the thing because we love hiking as well as like hot, hot springs because of course girl loves the hot springs. um I bought new everything <laughs> I was like I need new hiking boots I need a new rain jacket I need a new swimsuit I need new robes I need I mean I bought new everything and for like you know I, like a whole new toiletry kit like okay and um, question did you use all those things or did you just use like the top third and everything else just got left in the suitcase I I did use a lot of it like I will say but I didn't take any of the old stuff right so like I bought new hiking boots I used them because that was all I had <laughs> um I didn't bring a lot of the old stuff so See, the challenge I have is that I'm going for two and a half months. So I'm there for a while. It's summer, which is great because that means everything's pretty light. You don't need the big heavy jackets, except when we come back to Melbourne and it's Antarctic. So you just need like a jumper and things for like when you're leaving and when you're coming back. Otherwise, I probably won't need it. But then I'm just like, well, like just shoes alone. It's like I need just like a day, like just a walking shoe. I need a runner. I need like thongs. I need, sorry, that, what do you guys call them? Flip flops? -flops, (laughs) We call them thongs. You're probably thinking. Oh, wow. Okay, you're really getting into the details. Thongs in America. The shoe variety. The shoe variety. (laughs) And then, and then like an evening, like, you know, a bit of a a heel or something like that. But I'm like, shoes are so, like, I should really kind of nail that down to two pairs of shoes, really. But I feel like I cannot go less than four. I just, I just cannot bring myself to do it. But, Anyway, so that is what's keeping me busy. But to keep myself sane, I am still obviously reading and getting in as many podcasts as we can before we go so that I don't get too distracted when I'm over there. But let's take this little opportunity to talk about what books you're maybe looking forward to reading um, coming up soon. Have you got any up and coming books that you're looking forward to? I do. Yeah, I have so many books I'm looking forward to. I'm... 
I'm going to be sad that you are not going to be here and we're not going to be able to be recording as frequently, but I am excited for the opportunity to get to read kind of whatever I want. <laughs> not for the pressure of like me coming yeah. in going, Ali, you have to read this book. I'm already yeah. halfway through it. Why have you not started? <laughs> Yeah, like I feel like the last couple of months it's been like my reading has been very dictated by like the podcast and then like what I want to write, you know, like bookstagram and everything. So there's a like I'm just excited for an opportunity to like maybe get to read whatever I want. Um, there's a lot of great releases coming up. So I'm excited. I'm excited to read the um, a fourth the fourth book by Stasia Stark in her romanticy series. The first one is like A Court This Cruel and Lovely and the fourth book just came out and I have not been able to get to it. Any of them. They're really good. Yeah, they're really, really good. Um, And then the Discovery of Witches series, which is pretty old at this point, um, is a fifth book is coming out. So I'm super excited. That comes out in the middle of July. Um, It's called The Blackbird Oracle. So I'm like, really pumped up for that because that was it was like that was the next book after I read Ap Guitar that really I was like solidified like wow I'm into this and I love that series because it is an older MMC yeah. and or FMC right like she's like in her 30s she's like a college professor um so I'm really excited about that and then the other thing I've decided is I'm gonna read the Bridgerton series yes yes I have to get into some historical romance like people need to actually tell us what is some like you must read this historical romance like this is like this should be first on your list is it Bridgerton I think Bridgerton is actually a little bit older I think from what I've heard right there might be some that are more recent that are bigger more popular so please let us know if there is something great to read but that is definitely very exciting I see I've had this era of so we had like you know we had Hofast come out we had a fading in blood we had all these books come out that were sort of like just they were just were so excited to read them we had to read them and then it was like I finally got to my TBR and I finally read these books that had been there for ages but were actually amazing, like the Spark of the Everflame series. Like I'd been like, I have to read these books. And I finally read them and adored them, absolutely loved them. And then we obviously did uh, When the Moon Hatched, which was just that has blown my mind um, monumentally. And I'm actually now kind of reaching somewhat the end of, dare I say, I'm finishing my TBR. Like, who would have thought? I mean, I don't think I had a huge TBR. I didn't like have like tons of books there. I just kind of go and I'm just like, okay, what am I reading next? What's popular on Instagram right now? That's kind of how I go. But I'm almost coming to a stage where I need some recommendations. I need kind of my next books that I'm going to read and especially some holiday reading. What I'm excited about, I'm really excited about Raven Kennedy's Goldfinch that coming out, obviously super excited about that. Super excited about the final fourth installment of Spark of the Everflame. Uh, we that's been delayed sometime in August. Up. I know, but she hasn't given us an update yet on when the new release date is, but hopefully it's not too far away. And then I need some recommendations, guys, especially for holiday reading. Because you know what? I've got myself all the I've got all the audio books for like um all the Sarah J. Mass books and that. I was like, oh, maybe I'll go overseas and while I'm on a train, I'll listen to it and do the audiobook thing. But I do need some new books because I'm a real new book kind of person. I get a bit yeah. more excited when I'm reading something new. Otherwise, I kind of go really slow and I'll probably be all distracted being like, oh, look at that castle. Look at that beach. Like I'm going to be so <laughs> distracted. So I need some new exciting books to read. So please yeah. give me recommendations. <laughs> yeah. I definitely think you should read this Stasia Stark series. Um, mm. it, the first one's called The Court, This Cruel and Lovely. When book four came out, on the day that it came out, it was like number one in the Kindle store. And she's an indie author, fully self-published, no deal like, yet. So I, I like, think it's going to be big. Have I read the first one? I feel like it sounds very similar to something else that I've read, but it could be the same. It could be different, but I've definitely heard that title before. So I definitely need to go. And that sounds like that might be a great one to take away with me. So, and there's four books. And it's a and, finished and what's your, what's series. Your What's your star rating of these said books? Like all four stars. Nice, nice, solid, yeah. solid, solid four stars. Yeah, mm-hmm. beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful. Yeah. All right, so let's get into today's episode. So our episode today is specially brought to us by Ali, our Taylor Swift professional. 
We are getting into Rebecca Yaros and Onyx Storm and all the songs that Rebecca Yaros has been releasing. So for anyone that follows Rebecca on Instagram, she has been actually quite active lately. Since releasing the information about Onyx Storm, the title and that, she really kind of got into it. She has been actively writing and actively sharing the songs that she has been using as inspiration while she is writing. So we thought it might be a great idea to bring some of these songs for you and use our expertise in Ellie here to (laughs) break these down for you and try and get a bit of an idea of what they might be meaning and what hints uh, Rebecca is giving us for Onyx Storm Ahead. So Ellie, I'll hand it over to you. What has been your, your research and everything so far? Tell us about it. Okay, so there's like 17 songs that I have been able to find. Mm-hmm. that Rebecca Yaros has posted as like, and they're always the same. It's like, she posts a song with, with a lyric, by the way. And mm-hmm. then she's like writing mm-hmm. vibes. Um, And so, and not all of them are Taylor Swift, a very large portion of them are Taylor Swift, but not all, yeah. mm-hmm. but a lot of them are Halsey, which is like a bestie of Taylor Swift. Yeah. So, you know, kind of the same, like there's, there's some interesting things. Same genre. Same genre. Yeah. So I'm going to just kind of mostly just tell you all the songs that are on there. I've also made a Spotify playlist that we'll put in the show notes. So if you guys want to go listen to these songs yourself, you can go check it out on Spotify. Um, But I'm going to tell you the songs. I'm going to tell you the general vibes and then any maybe theories I have about them. So this should be, this is not like a full blown hour long episode, or at least we say, we'll see what, what happens. (laughs) We'll see what happens. Um, We can get excited. Sorry. (laughs) Okay, so first we're going to start with the Taylor Swift songs. Um, And we get a lot of her female rage songs. So we have Who's Afraid of Little Old Me, which is all about being underestimated, uh, female rage, feeling like people think that you can't do what you can, what you know you can do. Which is very violent like that's very you know violet has always been underestimated being so little and considered frail she was always considered the weakest link until she ended up getting the most powerful dragon where then people started to reevaluate her but i feel like her power has sort of come up so it's going to be interesting what she's potentially exploring in this next stage Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah because she's not like the underdog anymore no, um, no. very much not so it'll be really interesting how people are underestimating her still um then we have vigilante shit which is another song about like getting revenge mm-hmm. so i'm really excited about who violet is gonna get re- revenge on <laughs> yeah maybe jack like, I mean, obviously the Venom, like that obviously makes the most sense. She's going to be most pissed at like the Sage because he yeah. basically forced Zayden to turn. So she's going to be majorly pissed at him. That would be your number one source. The other one would be Jack because Jack is now being this like evil sidekick, kind of like the Joker, just like being this little evil, you know, on Zayden's shoulder, probably trying to get him to like draw more power from the ground. Yeah. Come on, Zayden. <laughs> like, so. And that's what Jack is kind of like, one of the reasons that like her mom is dead right because like we have to remember that violet is going into on form grieving um both for her mom and zayden so i mean she is probably in a very dark place yes and we hadn't we didn't explore that at the end of the book either like it kind of faded to black and we didn't really get how she was processing losing her mom because yeah she's had a really complex relationship with her mom but at the end it all kind of came out that her mum did everything out of love for her and things like that and so you know she did still love her mum and she's lost her and then on top of that boom Satan is now freaking Venon so it's Mm. she's dealing with a lot right now dealing with a lot lot. yep um and then we have like our kind of love songs from Taylor Swift so we've got Willow which is almost like the vibes of faded lovers right it's like I kind of just follow you where you go You've got um, a song called The Lakes, which is one of my favorite songs, which is kind of just like wanting to go hide away with your lover. It's like, take me to this place where, you know, we're kind of insulated from the world, which makes sense. Uh, We have Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince, which Rebecca Yaros loves, one of her favorite songs. Um, 
And then we have a song called So It Goes. And in the interview that Nicole attended, Rebecca Yarrow said that So It Goes is kind of like one of the biggest songs that she has written to, which is a really interesting song because it's a love song and it's definitely a sexy love song. It's like, like the chorus is like scratches down your back, like, (laughs) um, (laughs) but it's also kind of about like having like this physical connection, but maybe not being fully connected emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I find that to be really interesting. I was thinking the lakes is quite interesting about this hiding away from the world with your lover. Like that kind of, you know, how you have, you kind of suggested that they might run away together, like run away to try to find a cure for them potentially and have a lot of carnal desire. I mean, are we going to get some venom spice? Whoa, that could be interesting but it'll be Zayden and someone will be fine <laughs> he's fine. more morally gray than he normally is which is also yeah. fine, oh, no, it's it's fine. fine. Yeah. but yeah it kind of yeah. definitely suggests I know that that suggests that they might go somewhere together than just her by herself with no one else mm-hmm. 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 absolutely I think that's really interesting um and Willow too kind of suggests that because Willow it's it's kind of like faded loves but it's also like following like the person that you love sort of directs where your life goes, I guess. So, cause it's like the line is like, life was a willow and I bent right to your wind. So like I'm bending towards you, um, which could also mean that like if Zayden leaves, she's going to follow him, which I have a theory that Zayden's going to leave. Well, that adds to another thing in the interview, she spoke about how like Zayden was very morally gray at the beginning. And then he kind of, I guess almost softens up with Violet because, you know, she obviously he starts to fall in love and things like that. And then we she talked about how now it's almost flipped and now it's almost it's Violet that's becoming very morally grey and is changing more to be more like Zayden. So it's interesting mm-hmm. whether this is kind of suggesting that she is bending and changing and becoming darker and grittier and just whatever she needs to be to achieve whatever she's trying to achieve in this next book. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yes. And well, and she also says that like this book on Storm is very reputation coded or rep coded yeah. as this would say, yeah. which is yeah. like this darker album. It's kind of like Taylor Swift really coming back and like taking her power and kind of punching back at the world, which I think really goes with Violet yeah Um, and it's kind of like we're not gonna see nice Violet anymore like I feel like Violet's gonna flip a switch and she's gonna be like I'm like I'm not being the nice one anymore I'm not being Mm -hmm. friendly I'm not being nice I need to do this and I am am not letting anything stand in my way so we may see a much darker meaner side of Violet maybe she will do some things that we're not totally cool with we're like don't know how you feel about that um yeah but yeah, it will be very, very interesting. Is she going to turn on her friends in some way? You know, not that I felt like she did that a little bit in Iron Flame. Like not, you know, she kept secrets from them from quite a while before finally bringing them in. Um, so I don't yeah. know if she should explore that again of having her turn against her friends. I do hope that Violet sort of, you know, I don't want her to go and like break Rhiannon's heart again and things like that. But I don't know. Are we going to see things like that happen in this book? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, Rebecca Yars also said that Violet has one goal in this book. Yeah. You know, yeah. which means that she could not necessarily turn on her friends, but just like totally side. Yeah. I've got other things them. that are my priority right now. And you guys yeah. just keep the chip running, stay at the military college. Like, that's all cool, but I'm off to do what I need to do. So yeah, yeah, very, very interesting. All right. So those are the team songs. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Like I found a lot more depth in the non Taylor songs. Uh, Maybe because I was like listening to a lot of these songs for the first time and like really looking at the lyrics as opposed to just like relying on my memory. So maybe there's a lot more from the Taylor songs, but I don't know. I have some interesting ideas from some of these non Taylor songs. Okay. Well, you better jump into them and tell us all about it. So So the first one is called Nightmare, and that's by Halsey, who Mm -hmm. I love Halsey. Um, Very much female rage. (laughs) Yeah. 
Take. But there's this line in this song that I think is really interesting in the chorus. So it gets said a lot. I got to recognize the weapon in my mind. What? Yeah. yeah. I was listening weapon to that and I was like, oh. in my mind. Well, I mean, I've always that theorized is- that her second signet is going to be more of a mind power like you know like obviously her first signet is really like it's lightning it's it's like an external power it's big and this is going to be like a mind like a whoa that's like the next level like probably actually even better but it's got to be a power of the mind so that totally points to that yeah I was like oh crap and then the rest of the song is honestly a lot about like this idea of revisionist history this idea of having kind of like the rug pulled out from underneath you finding the truth and being very angry about it it's a very angry song so like it says things like I've had the rug pulled beneath my feet I've trusted lies and I've trusted men um there's a line that says I ain't got nothing to smile about I got no one to smile for which like oh that's heartbreaking and then um someone like me can be completely aware but I'm glad to be a real nightmare like she knows what's happened and she's gonna fuck some shit up. Oh yeah, no, 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 you're gonna say it. You're just gonna say it. It's the truth. <laughs> well, I mean, the lies and the men. I mean, my first thought is obviously Navar and everything that's been yeah. kept, and she's pissed about that. But then we've already yes. explored that. Like, is there gonna be more? Is she gonna be pissed at Zayden? Is she gonna be like, how dare you? I think she's gonna be pissed at Zayden. I really do. I really do. I know. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm just like, oh I, feel like coming. I think she's gonna be pissed at Zayden. Okay. I mean, obviously, but I hope not like too pissed. He was trying to save her life and he made a bad decision and you know, he would have died. Like she can't be too angry at him. Like, I don't know. But it's like, yeah, but definitely that's very interesting. The interesting thing it talks about revision of history. I think that was something again that you know, Rebecca spoke about in that interview. Mm-hmm. And I often think when you've just been writing, which literally like a week ago, she like posted the end to say she's just she, finished. Yeah. So this is all fresh in her mind, right? Mm-hmm. She's been in this zone. And so I can't help thinking that some of these things she's talking about, talking about how important she was wanting to explore the revisions of history, obviously how important that might be in the next book, whether that is just on in Violet's own mind that she's angry and she now wants to find out the truth and she wants to find out what really happened and she's going to go and find all that and part of that might be her journey to finding a cure for Satan. Uh, but, yeah, that is very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. My mm-hmm. mind is like, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, this, is how, this has been me all week as I've been listening to these songs. Yeah. Um, okay, the next two are not necessarily, like, I'm not going to talk a lot about them because they're really just, like, love songs. There's a song called Young God by Alzi, which is, it's just, like, the vibes of, like, people who are really in love and, like, it kind of makes them legends, kind of makes them young gods. So I think we're, you know, they're going to be in love. They're going to be in love. But... The gods thing. I was going to say, the gods thing is interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. like, that. Is that like an exploration of like the power, like how much power they have? Because obviously, because Violet may also be coming into this second signet power and it may be a huge power, a power that almost feels godlike. And mm-hmm. she may be needing to control that or learn that. And that may be a really challenging thing. And obviously she's She's young. She's also experiencing love and those feelings as well. So you could kind of see how, I don't know, going, the fact that she'll be exploring those two things together could create a lot of interesting plot lines for the future. Like there's a lot of, you could go take that to like some really dark, interesting places, um, yeah. especially if some of that well, power. And there's also like all the theories that like, cause there are gods in this book Yes. And I and there are like the theories that like Zayden and Violet are gonna like mimic Malik and they're gonna become Malik and yes. and his lover or something like that. So mm-hmm. that's interesting that it's like these two lovers who f- think of themselves as young gods. Like that's what that song is about. Yeah, so. and and another 
thing that's always interesting when she's exploring that revision of history is another thing that often is, you know, things can become quite biblical, quite godlike, you know, that that is kind of a part of history as well. They become the stories and the belief systems and that, but they can sometimes come from real genuine stories that get slowly expanded and grown as time goes along and they eventually mm-hmm. become godlike. So yeah, very, very interesting. Well, and this book or this song actually starts with her reading the Lord's Prayer, I think. So it is almost like a very religious type song. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the next song, Bedroom Hymns by Florence and the Machine, has a lot of that same like biblical imagery. So there's something interesting going on there. But really, this is just a spicy song. It's just, I just think I think this is what she listens to when she writes spice scenes. That's my takeaway. maybe, maybe. But if we want to break it down, because <laughs> in the interview when she was asked about the venom and taking that power, she said it's biblical. She said oh, it's, she did. She said, said that word exactly. It's biblical, like she said that this human need we have to like what we will do to take power to get power and. So it's interesting that she's sort of throwing this in, that she's literally had two songs, one that speaks about gods, this one that speaks about hymns, which is, again, a god kind of, you know, relevance. Yeah, I feel like is this something that's going to be explored, either the god aspect or the power aspect? I guess the difference between she's going to be learning this intrinsic power, Satan's going to be learning his venom power, let's be honest. She's going to be like, figuring that out and that's going to be very two we're going to have dark and light you know a bit like star wars it's like they're going to be both learning powers at the same time but one's dark and one's kind of good so that's going to be fair and then hopefully some spice scenes along the way it's going to mix up the two okay let me read you these some of these lyrics really quick this is as good a place to fall as any we'll build our altar here make me your maria i'm already on my knees (laughs) Uh, (laughs) i'm getting the the chair i'm getting the chair thing yeah. that is what i'm yeah. saying in my head and then there's another sign line that says because this is his body this is his love such selfish prayers and i can't get enough so really exploring some of those biblical scenes here yeah 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 i know that and spice so it's interesting it's very interesting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay okay next song sign of the times harry styles excellent song yeah, um this song is kind of about like a couple who can't seem to get out of the same patterns that they've been in mm-hmm. especially the pattern of not talking to one another <laughs> i wrote i wrote in my notes wonder who that sounds like this stresses me out that's what's in my notes <laughs> Oh, because we have, and is this yet again exploring, as we said, them being separated and going on different journeys at different times and that frustration we had in the last book where they kept missing each other all the time. They couldn't communicate their feelings in that because they were always separated. But I know that Rebecca has spoken about in, in the interview, she spoke about that she grew up in an army sort of family and then she's married someone, the soldier in the army. And so she knows what it's like to have these big gaps of separation and wanting to explore that in these books. So there is a possibility that we're going to experience more of that. Hopefully, at least though, this time we won't have a character like Verish that is like forcing it though. Like hopefully there'll be a better reason around it than like that, which was just I found really frustrating in the last book. So I just hated Verish so much. Yes, absolutely. I should um, actually, sorry, I'm just going to, sorry guys, I'm flicking to the interview quickly because this is just a little bit that I managed, I didn't quite catch it, so I couldn't share it on the highlights. But one question that was asked by the interviewer was, if you could punch someone in fourth wing, or I'm like, who would it be? And she said, Verish. She said, Verish oh, is who she would so punch. Great. <laughs> so great. That was so great. <laughs> um okay so the next song is a song called colors by halsey um it's basically a song about a sad sad boy and how he loses himself a little bit and she can't connect with him or find him because he's lost himself um and that he there's like a line that's really sad that's like you were red i was purple when we came together i was lilac and you decided you didn't like that color anymore which is extremely (laughs) nerve-wracking 
This makes me nervous. This is just, this has Zayden written all over it, like yes. inside out, back yeah. to front. And this is probably yeah. from like his perspective as well, that he'll probably won't feel like he's good enough for her now. He's going to feel like I'm like poisoned. I need to stay away from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes me really scared that it's going to drive a wedge yeah. between them. And it's not just a wedge between, obviously, we've got Violet and Zayden. We've also got Segal and Zayden, like, as well. I think there's going to be a massive fracture in their relationship too because, yeah, she's going to be pissed. So, and he's going to be so alone and he's just going to need a hug and... It's just, yeah. I need Zayden to be okay. I need him to be okay. I need him to be okay. I like a quarter of the way through the book. I need, oh, he's okay. We've had a cure. It's all fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, the line is, okay, what's the line? I'm going to just like read it perfect. Um, uh, it's it's like everything has, is gray now. His hair, his smoke, his dreams. And now he's so devoid of color, he don't know what it means. What if he's and it's just like. What if his shadows like, turn gray? Like, what if they stop being black? They start being gray with the venom, like silvery venom, gray. Like, yeah. Have we have we had oh characters that have that kind of power that have been venom? Like, we've sort of generally. I mean, because Rebecca sort so. of spoke about generally people who've taken that power haven't had a dragon's power. Like they've generally always had no power and they've gone, well, I'm going to get venom power. That's how I'm going to get my power. But obviously in Satan's circumstance, he's had no other choice. He's drained of power. He's pulled it from the ground. Now he's got this venom power and it's going to mix with his normal dragon power. Ray shadows. That is my theory. <gasps> and that might be like the onyx storm. It's kind of going to be like gray stormy shadows. <laughs> 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 shadows what am I talking about I love it that is such an interesting idea okay I'm loving that I'm like I'm gonna keep thinking about that random guys I'm just brainstorming here but you gotta love it this is what this podcast is all about we're on the fly we are we are brainstorming in lifetime is what you get I am basically just talking to Nicole about the songs and what I think we're filming it like welcome welcome to our lives and our conversations with each other (laughs) Okay, next song is the song called Warriors by Imagine Dragons. Um, to me, this song kind of sounds like it could be like Zayden's point of view or even Taryn's point of view. But it's like, it's almost like a rallying cry saying to someone like, don't give up, like, because we're the people who started this battle, this war, like, we have to finish it. Okay. Which again, very like, sounds sounds a lot like this world that we're in. So definitely. Very- and where we're kind of up to that we're just starting this battle against the Venom, like where we sort of mm-hmm. ended, that started, we've pushed them back, but they're still a, like we, you know, but we won the day. We haven't like won the whole war, what, whatever right. that saying is, how they say it. It's yeah. like there's still a huge battle to go. So obviously, and that's obviously going to be a huge part of the book, whether that is, you know, I wonder if this will almost be a, a varied point of view where you're going to have Violet and Zayden possibly off exploring for cures and things. And then you're going to have the other characters preparing for war, preparing for this bigger battle that's going to happen and what they're doing in Navarre, what they're doing at Basquiat. Like what are they doing there to try and prepare for this epic battle that's coming? Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's a really interesting song and it, it has like really great like vibes. So I, I really recommend it. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. The next song. Nicole this song gives me so much anxiety (laughs) oh man okay (laughs) a classic song it's called in the end she has posted like uh, a remake of it like a 10th anniversary song of it so you probably know it it's like because it's like we got so far and went so far but in the end it didn't even matter yeah yeah, Yeah, don't I I should never sing um (laughs) But it's like this, like more like woman singing in, and like it's just really got some great vibes. Okay, but this song literally makes me think that Zayden and Violet are not going to get up together <laughs> because it's all about trying yeah. so hard I'm to so hold hard on. and got so far, but in the end, it doesn't yeah. even matter. Mm-hmm. And it's like all that works for nothing because it all falls apart anyway. 
that's that's scary. That's scary. Yeah. Like that <laughs> Rebecca scary. did say to us, she's like, "You've picked poorly." She's like, "You are not safe with me." Like that's literally what she said to us. She's like, yeah. "When you chose me as your favorite author, guess what? You're getting your hearts broken. Like yeah. I'm not going to give you happy ever after, or not without a lot of pain first. So. Oh, what could that possibly mean? Is that just like the war? Is that like they're going to go on this whole journey to try and find a cure and then in the very last bit it's not, maybe not only will it fail but then Satan gets worse and he like goes full venom and he ends up like connecting with the sage and being like, actually, I'm just going to stay here ongoing goodbye, Violet. Like, yeah. I think think that Violet is getting her heart broken in this book. Mm. That has been my takeaway from all of this. I think Violet's heart will get broken. And yeah. that means that my heart will get broken. <laughs> well, and if well, we're looking at a five book series, right? So this is coming in at book three. Now, if I was a writer, I would be making the third and fourth book the most traumatic. Like they would be your biggest lows, your biggest, like we've just like these first ones, that's just our appetizer. That was just like, oh, Liam died. That's just like your little, you know, what, just like your little like, oh, here's your little candy, your little, your little mini death. Now we get the real ones. Now we get the real pain because you're going to have to have that come back in the fifth book, hopefully for a happy ever after. But yeah, the next two books are going to be filled with pain. So, so much pain. Yeah. Um, okay. Then we have a song called experiment on me by Halsey, more female rage, especially about being underestimated. That's kind of what this one is about is like, you underestimate me and I'm going to prove you wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next one is a really interesting choice because it's a very old song. Um, gorilla radio by rage against the machine. Uh, this is like a very like hardcore political song honestly like it's kind of like a like a revolution anthem in a way it's very much like speaking to power like kind of it talks a lot about revisionist history actually and like being angry that like the people in power get to like make the narrative and and we have to like fight against that um so i think this pairs very nicely with what we've kind of heard from her in the interview about definitely because we know Violet's definitely going to be angry about that. There's the scribe part of her that's going to be like, what you guys have done, this revision of history, this ex- like removal of hundreds of years of knowledge is wrong. And she may just be partly on a journey to go and seek that knowledge and actually find the truth. She may be a journey of truth that she's trying to find. And, yeah, obviously, and there is potentially going to be a lot of politics in that with Obviously, mm-hmm. Violet will probably lead it, but, you know, Justinia will potentially be on her side. Uh, there may be quite a few of them that are really on this journey for truth. Imogen, and Bobby, Eric, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. And, and I think they're all going to be pretty pissed, you know? Like, they're going to be, like, activists. Like, let's let's get yeah. these people out of power. <laughs> I think a question I have is who's going to sort of be the antagonist in this next book? Like, last time we obviously had you know, um, Basquiat was kind of being run sort of by Verish and Dane's dad and that, but that's all like, they've all kind of, well, Verish is dead and, and that. So we've sort of lost those antagonists. Are we going to get a new one? Is there something potentially going to be someone new now? Mum's gone. So who's sort of, are we going to have someone that, you know, that I generally would say they're annoying, but there's that person that's just kind of like from the government or something that's kind of like, yeah. oh, this is, these are the rules and this is, you know, you're not allowed to break them. So, you know, is there going to be that antagonist that's kind of going to make it more difficult for them to go out and seek that truth without fighting against something? That's definitely and it could nice. end up being, I can't remember his name, but like the main general that has like yeah. the other yeah. big, big black dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Mo- Mo- um, um, Morgan, like more... Um, it starts with M. It's like Morgan. yeah, I know, I know, right? It's been so we didn't do a reread or anything before we record, recorded these, so it's like I can't remember the names, but like the main guy, you know what I mean? Uh, like the main, yeah, the main like, general. He's pretty bad. You'd almost wonder if he's who, been himself. Who knows things? Like yes, it yeah, is he knows everything. That he knew that there was a set that the feather tails were a seventh type of dragon. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. Like he knows everything. Like he's almost a leader in keeping things secret. And I think like the general Sorengale, like her mom actually felt like she was almost there to soften and protect Violet. And that she was almost thought <laughs> by me being in this position of power, I can protect my family. That's what came out at the end of the book was her sheer passion to protect her children. She was just like, I'm doing bad things to protect my kids. And I think when we think about Violet, Violet is more similar to her mum than she likes to admit. She like she thinks it. she's different, mm-hmm. but she's actually not. When she wants to protect someone, she will do bad things as well. Like she mm-hmm. absolutely will. She just hasn't quite got to that point. But I think she'll be getting to that point in the next book. So. Yeah. Um, okay, two more songs. Uh, so the next song is a song called Him and I, which is also uh, Halsey is featured in it. So again, we we love Halsey here, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Some of these lines give me so much anxiety. <laughs> okay. And so I have to share, you have to share this anxiety with me. So one of the lines is, I wouldn't see the point of living if one of us died. What the fuck is love if there is no suffer? Most likely I'm a die with you. I'm like trying to read like rapping lines because there's like rapping in it. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I, um, so but like the vibes of the song is like lovers who are sort of like epically connected to one another would do anything for each other. They're like ride or die, kind of similar to the song Don't Blame Me by Taylor Swift, but like with some really scary lines in there that make me nervous. But like ride and die. I also think of that literally like the dragon you ride and what would be the point of living if one of them died like my biggest fear my biggest fear and also theory for this next book is we are losing a major dragon in this book yeah yeah Taryn Segale and Dana I generally think it'll be Violet because Violet's got two so I feel like there's a higher chance that she might survive losing a dragon (laughs) because the other one might kind of hold her yeah to the yeah. earth and be like you can't go you still got my half to keep you alive so but the pain that would cause I mean I'm also here theorizing could like Zayden die um or could he theoretically be dead-ish because of him turning like fully venom that gives me anxiety too it gives me a lot of anxiety yeah. I feel like it could be dragon coded though I feel like it could be dragon coded and I don't want it to it be, be. Oh. Uh, yeah Scary. Okay, last song. Last song. This song is called Theory. Decode. This is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. We're going to theorize it. So Rebecca hears it and she goes, oh, they already guessed that. So I can't do that now. Yeah. I need to do something different. I'll just, yeah. I'll just do it. Fine. Yeah. Okay, last song, Decode by Paramore. Oh, okay. <laughs> this song, song I know. Cool. Fun. This song has like a lot of fun history because it was written for the Twilight movies. Yes. And Haley Williams said that it was written from Bella's perspective and is about her feelings for Edward. Okay. And so this is like a quote that Haley has. Okay. Decode is about the building tension, awkwardness, anger, and confusion between Bella and Edward. Edward is the only mind Bella can't read. And I feel like that's a big part of the first book and one of the obstacles for them to overcome. It's one added tension that makes the story even better. Um, so there's like a lot of female rage in here, but it's also, it's not very promising for Zayn and Violet. There are some lines that are like, but you think that I can't see what kind of man that you are, but what if you're not a man at all? (laughs) Uh, there's another sign that says, how did we get here when I used to know you so well? The vibes of this song are like tragic love and it ends tragically. Yeah. Cause like, you know, what if the what if being Venom starts making Zayden really bad? You know, because sometimes that power, as she said in the interview, power corrupts. Yeah. This is a very corrupting power. It can turn you bad. Could this be their love falling apart? Like, because yeah, if it gets worse, they could come to a point where she's like. You're not the person I used to know. Like, you're not that person anymore. Could always say be flipped. We could see Violet really turning into a very dark, angry, bad, vigilante style woman. But I feel like it's more likely to come from Zayden because while she could get a little morally gray, he could go fully black. He could go fully all the way, especially if he's got family connections to the Venom. Like, 
he's got a very complex relationship with his mum that we don't know a lot about. If we end up finding out that she's over there being a happy little Venon over in some Venon royal world, <laughs> he may just get absorbed into that. <laughs> so, okay, I kind of waited to give you too many of my theories till the end because I wanted to kind of like be like, okay, this is everything that I've been dealing with all week long, okay? I've been in this and it, it like continues here is your space to safely share your theories and ideas i think that one of two things or both could happen i think in this book i think that zayden is going to leave violet i think that he's going to think that he's not good enough yeah that he needs to be away from her and so he's mm-hmm. going to try and disappear and yeah. that is what's all of these like very heartbreaking songs are what's going on yeah I think there's a very real chance that Zayden somehow dies or becomes way worse. I do still think that Zayden and Violet are in game. I still think yeah, that. Yeah. I'm me too. Me too. But I think that like I'm not sure that like things are gonna be. I think things are I'm feeling like things are gonna get worse for them in book three. Yes. Like I just these well, stories tell a story picture and in fairness to if we bring this back and take the emotion out of it and think of it from a writer's perspective if she just has them being happy little pair now we let's be honest as readers we actually don't really want that we want tragedy we want suffering because then we'll enjoy the comeback from that we'll enjoy (laughs) getting no redeem that redemption arc that we'll potentially get but we have to crash and burn first and unfortunately we haven't crashed and burned completely yet. That is still potentially coming. So you could be on to something. I don't want you to be, but it could be. Oh. And I'm scared. <laughs> I'm very, very scared uh, because that will be really hard to read and it will be painful. <laughs> and, yeah. and There's a lot like, of just like tragic love vibes in these yeah. songs. And I think this is interesting because, you know, when – when Rebecca got asked the question, you know, how much, what was it, how much suffering or like, am I going to cry? And she said, like, what's your tolerance? And she kind of had trouble answering it because maybe she was like, you're not going to cry necessarily. You're going to be pissed, angry, frustrated, upset. Like it's going to be like a multitude of emotions because you're potentially going to see a character stopping who they are and become something completely different or die or get as close to death as possible because they're going to turn fully venom. Like it's going to be bad. It's just going to be bad. Yeah. I'm scared. yeah. I'm scared. I am really scared. I think it's <laughs> going to be really tough. I think it's going to be a really hard book. Um, and I don't know. And I also think we're going to see Violet coming into her power and being like the epitome of female rage. So I'm super stoked for that. Like there is some positives yeah. here, but yeah. These are some sad songs. You guys. I, yeah. <laughs> and I think, I mean, I'm really going to keep coming back to the Star Wars aspect of Ray and Kylo Ren and the belief yeah. that they could go to this really where he is fully bad. He's fully part of the dark side and she is fully part of the good side. And there's going to be this war of him trying to get her to turn venom and her trying to cure him and bring him back to the light, possibly also feeling like she's obligated to kill him. At some point she may be like, I have to kill Zayden. Like he is now, I mean, imagine if Zayden has all the power that he has, but he's now working for the Venom. Like he's their general, he's their king, king of the (laughs) Venom. Like like that would be pretty bad and very, very interesting. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm the only word I can think of (laughs) very very interesting and very heartbreaking exactly a lot of tragic heartbreak just coming at us guys (laughs) get ready for it we knew what we're in for we know what we're in for like just everyone just think about you know preparing for this book you know do you need to see your doctor do you need to get your depression meds do you need to get some alcohol do you need to get your chocolate and marshmallows whatever you need tissues to cope with the tragedy we're about to experience like just get ready because yeah. it's coming yeah <laughs> all right well we said this episode would be about 20 to 30 minutes uh here we are at 50 
well. You're welcome. I mean, you guys, if you're here with us, you hopefully enjoy being part of our conversations. And you don't want this to be finished in like 20 minutes because you just want to spend as long with us as possible. So yeah, you want to chat with us. Thank you so much, Ali, for putting that together, putting those songs together. You are our mastermind of all things Taylor Swift, Halsey, and everything that Rebecca Yaros loves. Let's just call out for a moment that Ali got shared by Rebecca Yaros for one of her stories that had a Taylor Swift theme. So you're definitely all over that side of Rebecca Yaros. But if anyone else has any thoughts, ideas, theories about these songs and their relevance to the upcoming Onyx Storm, please share it. We hope some of our theories were maybe wrong today. Hopefully we get much happier endings and things occur than what we have theorized. But I think knowing Rebecca, we need to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. But we will keep you updated with all the information we get. We hope you have enjoyed this episode. Please hit the subscribe button. Follow us on Spotify. We are on Instagram. We are on Alley Cats and Books, Book Loverholic, Romanticy Readers. You can email us. You can subscribe to us. We love hearing from you guys. We love hearing your messages and responding to you. Thank you so much for joining us today and we will see you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.